name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today is the third Sunday in Lent. That God may hear our prayers. Let us call to mind that we are sinners and we are sorry for our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, out of every mercy, and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we, who are bow bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by our mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the people thirsted for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out up? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the rod with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the fault finding of the children of Israel and because they put the Lord to the test by saying, Is the Lord among us? The word of the Lord. All that today you, you will listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. All that today you will you listen, listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. All that today you will listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. All that today you will, you will listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you will listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you will listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you will listen to his voice. Harden not your heart. Oh, that today you will listen to his voice. Harden not your heart. Come, let us drink out our 
joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While we were yet helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why one will hardly die for a righteous man? Though perhaps for a good man, one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. To God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to Are truly the savior of the world. Give me living water that I may not thirst. Glory your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and so Jesus, wearied as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water, Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? Who gave us this well and drank from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And he whom you now have is not your husband. This you say truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men, where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such, the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but none said, What do you wish? Or, Why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the city and said to the people, Come. See a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. 
Meanwhile, the disciples begged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him food? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four moons, then comes the harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes and see how the fields are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of your words that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this indeed is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. We are, um, as rightly was introduced, celebrating the third Sunday of Lent. And in the Gospel, from first reading, Exodus 17, verse 1, And the Gospel, John chapter 4, from verse 5 to 42. Two of them are talking about water and thirst, thoughts. And so it is right that we can call the theme of this homily, the living water. The living water. In the gospel, meanwhile, in the first reading, in the deserts, the people were thirsty and they demanded for water. And they said to Moses, So you brought us out of Egypt into this desert to die of thirst. Which means, lack of water causes death. When you lack water entirely, you die. So the matter before us is a matter of life and death. Because it is discussing Water. Now, when you transpose it to the gospel, it is now talking about the matter of spiritual life and the spiritual death. Did you bring us into the desert to die of lack of water? In the gospel, we meet two kinds of water. And then we meet two kinds of wells or fountains. 
There is the fountain of Jacob producing a kind of water. And then there is the fountain, the living fountain, the walking fountain of God, Christ, promising another kind of water. Now, Jesus defines these two waters and what they can do. He, because he met a Samaritan woman, which is a principal character in this gospel, and we are going to talk about her. He told the woman, the water you have come to draw, after drinking it, you will still be thirsty again. But if you drink the water that I shall give you, you will not be thirsty again. And the woman demanded for that kind of water, even though she did not understand it. The water the woman comes to draw from the well of Jacob represents everything we fight for in this world that is not of God, that is not of Christ, material things. If you get them, you will, like, you will still desire more. If you get, the more you get them, the more you desire. If you buy one car today, you will see another car, and the one you bought yesterday will look like rubbish to you, and you would want to get, you will get thirsty all the time. And so you keep pursuing what you cannot get, what cannot satisfy you until life ends and you look back and discover that you have lived a wasted life because you were pursuing something that had no eternal value and so jesus invites her to come up higher and drink another kind of water he said this one that i will give if you drink it fully it will begin to well up which means that one will construct another well, another fountain in you. Meaning that there will be a constant flow of this kind of water. Making you forever filled. And you will never be thirsty again. Why? Because that one will turn you into a river. What does he mean? He, he practicalizes it in the life of the Samaritan woman. Who is this woman? Now, we look at what's transpired between her and Jesus. And then we discover that this woman represents humanity without God, without Jesus. So, the woman comes to the well. The Bible is specific about the time. The reading is specific about the time. It says, the woman came to the river. It was about the sixth hour. The sixth hour. Why is the Bible writer particular about the hour the woman arrived at the well? It is because the hour passes a message about the woman. And that message is, if you read Matthew 27, 47. Now, you see that the Bible talks about the hour that Christ died. It was at the sixth hour. And then, we know that translating it to present our contemporary chronology sixth hour is three o'clock in the afternoon now if you are familiar with uh, hebrew tradition you will discover that women don't go to to fetch water at the stream or at the well in the afternoon they go in the evening another thing is that women don't go to the river or to the stream or to the well alone they go in groups. You remember when they went to marry for, Je um, for Rebecca? When they went to marry Rebecca, they came in group. And then the servant had to spot because Abraham had given a sign of the particular girl among the group of girls that would come in the evening to fetch water. The one that belonged to Isaac. So women don't go in the evening. But this particular lady came by three and she came alone. Why? The answer is buried in what Jesus told her. Go and call your husband. And then he said, I have no husband. 
Meanwhile, she was living with a man. And Jesus prophetically knew and told her, Yes, you are right, because you have lived with five men. And now, the one you are living with is not even your husband. So, six men, a particular lady has lived with. That qualifies her to be a professional prostitute and a promiscuous woman. And now, you now know why she had to come at an odd hour. Because she is a rejected person in the community. She does not mingle with fellow women. Probably, she could have been a, a husband snatcher. So, she will sneak in the afternoon, fetch her water, and go back to her house. In the evening, the rest can come. And of course, she had no friend, she had no companion. A rejected person, a degraded person, an abandoned person, a judged and a condemned person. That is humanity without Christ. But today, she has met someone who insisted on being a friend to her. Jesus said, give me water. He wasn't requesting for water, actually. He was initiating a discussion because he knew that this woman does not have a companion, not have a friend. I say, how come you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, and upon that, a Samaritan woman, for water? Don't you know that Jews and Samaritans, they don't talk together. They don't even use the same cup. And then Jesus shifted the arguments, the ground of the discussion. He said, if you know the gift of God, and he, he it is that asks of water from you, you would have a give, you would ask him and he will give you a living water. Jesus introduces another kind of water that will change her completely. And then the discussion continued. When the discussion continued, as she began to listen to Christ, she did not know that transformation had begun to take place in her. She did not know that that water is the word of God. And she was already receiving that water. And she was already being cleansed and washed of her iniquities. She didn't know until the next stage in the gospel what happened. She turned back and went back to the city. The same city that she avoids people because of how they treat her. On account of her condition and her past. She went to the Samaritan city and summoned the entire city and the entire city followed her. That is the first miracle of the transformation of the living water. The woman that was avoiding people now came boldly and now he said, all of you come. Come and see the one that has told me everything about him. Could he be the Messiah? And even the king of the city stood up and answered her call. That is a miracle. And that shows that if you hear God, the world will hear you. If you obey God, creation will obey you. That's a miracle. That's a testimony. At the end of the gospel, the people say they believed because of the testimony of the woman. This is a message to us. The only thing that will satisfy you in life is the Spirit of God. If you seek contentment, if you seek satisfaction, if you seek fulfillment such that whatever is happening around you, you will maintain absolute calmness and tranquility coming to Christ. But if you discover that every time you are pursuing something, every time you are pursuing something, and you are ready to kill and destroy to get it, you have not drank from the well of the salvation. You are still drinking from the Jacob's well, and you are going back every time to fetch because you are never satisfied. And then we look at this woman. She came to the well of Jacob, and then she met the well of God. And then she received transformation. The community answered her call. Before now, even if she gives you bread, you will not collect. But having met Christ, she went back and summoned the entire city to herself 
and she led them to Christ. So the rejected one had become an apostle of the city. This is what Jesus does for us. And then we look at another thing. Those who drink from the well of the Savior, Jesus says they will become a river themselves. And that river will be issuing forth from their hearts to people. And that is what happened to this woman. After drinking from the well of Jesus, which is his word and his spirit, she turned back and became an apostle. And the reading says that many believed on account of her testimony. She believed on account of the testimony of Christ. And then many believed on her own testimony. You know, every time we come here, we say, when God does something, don't keep quiet. Father Founder said that initially when he, this place started, he was not allowing people to give testimony. Because there is that feeling that if you, people, it will look like you are the one doing it. Until Christ drummed it into his ears that it is important for people to be allowed to give testimony for two reasons. One, to give glory to God. Two, to inspire faith in people. Every time people come here to give testimony and they will link their testimony to the testimony they heard. He said, I came here and I heard somebody give testimony about the same case that I have. And then I went and did exactly what that person did. And I received the same testimony. So immediately Jesus does something for you. That thing he did for you is water that he has given you. Water of life. Every miracle energizes us, revives us to believe stronger in God. And so that miracle turns you into an apostle. Where you are working, where you are schooling, in your streets, in your house, don't close your mouth. Announce what God has done for you. Because some of you will come and say, uh, God did it for me, but I don't know how to talk in public. So I, I, I could not come to give testimony. By doing that, you are taking the glory that belongs to God. Amen? Now, another sign of transformation that occurs in our lives. Immediately we begin to drink from the well of the Savior. Is that we acquire boldness, confidence, and trust. After hearing Jesus, she went and addressed the city. And nobody questioned and said, who are you? What are you to talk to us? They stood up like zombies and followed her. Because she's now energized by what she has received. As a member of this sanctuary, fear should not be part of your life. You should be as bold as lion. Because Jesus the Savior is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he has said, go ahead, I am behind you. Another thing that happens to those who drink from the well of the Savior is that they become people of peace. Peacemakers. And it runs from Jesus. Now, you look at the gospel again and you see something. Traditionally, Jews and Samaritans cannot sit down to discuss. But by the ministry of the water of life from the Savior's well that is dispensed through this woman, the entire Samaritan city left their city to come and hear from a Jew. And after hearing from her, their leader begged him, stay with us. Which means, at that point, tribalism, ethnicity, barriers, hatred, envy, disunity had gone. What matters is Christ 
And so a city of Samaritan, a city, a city of Samaritans is begging a Jew to stay with them and teach them for two days. That's the miracle. And so the second reading says, we have peace. Those who have believed in Christ, we have peace with God. If you are agent of disunity, agent of division, agent of hatred, agent of envy, you don't need a prophet to tell you that you have not drank from the well of the Savior. And now is an invitation for us to come and drink so that the water that comes from us will be life-giving water. Remember, you must produce water. Your character, your words are waters that you produce. So if you want to check where you are drinking from, check what you are producing. You cannot be drinking from the well of the Savior and be producing water of division, water of hatred, water of condemnation, water of jealousy, water of envy. If these things are in your life, check yourself very well because you have not seen him. You have not known him. Transformation. Fountain. And so it is a message for those of us who either you live here or you come to prayer here. Immediately you arrive at this center. You have come to draw water. With joy you will draw water from the west of salvation. With joy. With joy you will draw water from the west of salvation. So immediately you leave your house, you are coming to draw water because this place is the well of God. And for more than 30, 80 years, this water has been rushing speedily and steadily. And people have been coming and they come and they go back transformed. The question is, you that have come here, what have you drank? Have you really located the Savior's well? Have you really encountered the founder of this place? Jesus the Savior. Has he talked to you? Has he touched you? The sign that he has touched you is that you will begin to behave like him. The touch, the cleansing is not only physical but also spiritual. That is why when we want to give prayer, we say you must be a good person. Because that good person is a sign, is the water that is flowing from you. The pilgrimage center, the sanctuary of Jesus, the Savior, LL, must be manifesting from you, wherever you are. People should be able to encounter you and say, are you, do you go to LL? Not because they have seen you here or your face is familiar, but because you behave like people who go to LL. I ask you, God has blessed you here. Has God blessed people in your community through you from this place? The booklet of devotion to Jesus the Savior, how many people have you given it to? These are indices. Because immediately you drink, you become a tap. Immediately you connect, you become a tap. Since you started coming to LL, how many people have come here through you? Through your testimony. In the registrar of membership, how many people's names are there on your accounts? Without you, they would not have been here. But because you, you spoke to them, their name is there. That makes you an apostle. 
Because there is a grace that follows with stepping into this place. I had an encounter as a seminarian. We, were, we had already finished uh, our seminary studies. It was time for ordination, diaconate. And then, um, in his usual way, what I found, I said, we must come here. You cannot be ordained until you are properly checked. And so we came. So in the process, there was an outside mass in Abakileke. And so we went. As the outside mass was going on, someone was brought. I still remember the name of that man to be John. This man was very huge. But his condition was terribly terrible. In fact, it was in human opinion, it was better for him to die than in the condition she wa he was. His legs were like this lectern. And swollen water rushing from every side of his body. And then in the village now, no proper medication, no proper dressing. Flies all around him. And you cannot talk about the smell. And these people dragged this man, carried him giddy, 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 to the stage and dumped him before Father Founder. You know, the mass servants and the security people we are hesitant on them bringing because he was not really the order alone. So when they dumped him, I was just watching the situation. I was standing at the back of the altar watching. The whole altar was uncomfortable. And so I just had what I found that beckoned on one of those that brought him up. And the person lowered his ears. And what I heard was, there is nothing I can do for him here. Bring him to LL. And that, because in the outside mass now, with the crowd and with the rushing, you cannot even sit down to listen to them to tell their stories. That was my first shock. So the next Monday, they brought him here. I, I didn't follow up the case again because that was the time they were clearing the bush. This place was bush to build this church of Jesus the Savior. And a part of our Checking whether we can become priests here is that we will be here to carry cement and mix concrete. So we are here doing the work. One day, Father was standing at there, inspecting the work. They were still clearing the book because this place was the people were dumping refuge, refuge, refuge here. So the caterpillars were clearing that side. And the man came. I saw the man, I recognized his face. The man came walking with his two legs healed and healthy. And I can remember him asking Father. Father said, Are you the one? He said, Father, it's me. He was doing his leg like this. I was saying, Father, if you want, I can carry block, I can carry cement. And Father said, No, 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 no. You cannot carry cement. He said, Father, I can carry cement. I can carry a block to show that life had returned into him. He had drank from the well of the Savior and has received not just physical healing, but spiritual revival. She, he stayed here for, for long before I'm sure she, he must have become one big person because he used to do well. Must have gone to his business and he's doing well. It's just that uh, I don't used to see him around like most of you do. You will drink and run away. Amen? So, summarily, brothers and sisters, the gospel invites us to think about our lives. First, have you met Christ? Have you been connected to him? Second, what is the kind of testimony you are bearing? Are people coming to experience Christ through you. The words you speak, the actions, the things you do, they are testimonies either for God or for the devil. Which one 
do you bear? As we reflect upon this, may God bless his word in our hearts through Christ our Lord. We join you, we draw water from the wells of salvation. Stand up, everybody. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was he connected of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful God gives us the living water, our true salvation. Let us pray to the Father for all who test for his divine life. Christians everywhere may respond to the word of God during this holy season. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I depend on you. I have the power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. I have no power of my own. That God's people may worship Him in spirit and truth and reject the temptations of evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I depend on you. I have the power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. I have the power of my own. That those who have rejected God may turn to Him and know His loving mercy in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I depend on you. I have the power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. I have the power of my own. The true, sincere confession of their own sins, those gathered here may be at peace with God 
and one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I depend on you. I have no power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. I have no power of my own. That all the members of this international sanctuary may bear the fruits of those who have shared in the living water of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I depend on you. I have no power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. That the water of the Spirit, welling up to eternal life, may purify our dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I depend on you. I have the power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. I have no power of my own, mighty Jesus. Jesus, I depend on you. I have no power of my own. Jesus, I depend on you. Let us add our individual intentions. Reckoning on the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus the Savior, let us pray prayer to Our Lady of El Ele. O Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of El Ele, we humbly Thank beseech you. you to step in. Be with be us as you promised on the 7th September, September 1996 when, when you appeared in the International, International Sanctuary LL, carry each and every one of us as you carried your son Jesus the Savior who also was carrying with his right hand the most trans of the LL Eucharistic procession stretching our feet do not abandon us May we live the life that is pleasing to you and our divine Savior. And may your Son, Jesus, the Savior, grant us good health, long life, and success in our proper undertakings. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving Father, through Jesus, we have entered the life of grace. And your spirit has been poured into our hearts. Receive the prayers we offer in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Forever and ever. Now is offer three time and thanksgiving. Those of us who wish to thank God in a special way should go kill and come to the altar for their special thanks immediately. Glory be to Jesus. If people proclaim the goodness of the Lord, we joy proclaim the goodness of the Lord. If people proclaim the goodness of the Lord, we joy proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Everybody proclaim the goodness of the Lord. We joy proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Everybody proclaim the goodness of the Lord. We joy proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor we ask this through christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift, lift them up, up to, to the lord. lord let us give time to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so, ardently did he test for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we, too, give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now is the most important moment in our Eucharistic celebration. Jesus the Savior is coming down on this altar now. Everybody must kneel down. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, 
when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving time that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Camillus, our Bishop, Patrick, his auxiliary, Emmanuel, our founder, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Yosef, our most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent and turn our life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the feet of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirits. spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Let us join hands together and praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises, sing praises, sing praises, sing praises for the
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe eternal life. Amen. Prayer before Holy Communion. Prayer for help. O oh God, help me to make a good communion. Mary, my dearest mother, pray to Jesus for me. My dear angel guardian, lead me to the altar of God. An act of contrition. O oh my God, because you are so good. I am very sorry that I have sinned against you, and by the help of your grace, I will not sin again. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be world without an end. Amen. Now it's time for reception of Holy Communion. We remind ourselves that the celebration of the Holy Mass is for the good of all. But the reception of the Holy Communion is only for Catholic communicants who prepare themselves in the traditional way of the church. Glory be to Jesus. Living fountain of life. In your mercy, O oh, Jesus the Savior, shower your blessings on us. Great Emmanuel, in the blessed sacrament, have mercy on us and grant us your success. The living fountain of life, in your mercy. Oh, Jesus the Savior, show why your blessings on us. Great in and the blessed sacrament. Have mercy on us and grant us your success. The living fountain of life, in your mercy. Oh, Jesus the Savior, show why your blessings on us. Blessed sacrament, have mercy on us and grant us your success. The living fountain of life, in your mercy, O oh, Jesus the Savior, show I your blessings on us. Waiting on us in the blessed sacrament, have mercy on us. The bread of life, Jesus the Savior, the fountain of life, the spring well of life, give us your love, give us your strength, have mercy on us, and grant us your success. The living fountain of life, in your mercy. Savior, show all your blessings on us, waiting on God in the blessed sacrament. Have mercy on us and grant us your success. The bread of life, Jesus the Savior, the fountain of life, the 
Jesus, I love you. All I have is thine. Yes, I am. Yes, I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Amen. Jesus, I love you. All I have is thine. Yes, I am. And yes, I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Amen. Jesus, I love you. All I have is thine. Yes, I am. And yes, I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Amen. Prayer to Our Lady of Helele. O Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Helele, we humbly beseech you to step in. Be with us as you promised on the 7th September 1996 when you appeared in the International Sanctuary Helene. Carry each and every one of us as you carry their son, Jesus the Savior, who also was carrying with his right hand the monstrance of the Eucharistic procession. Strengthen our feet. Do not abandon us. May we live the life that is pleasing to you and our divine Savior. And may your Son, Jesus the Savior, grant us good health, long life, and success in our proper undertakings. Amen. Jesus the Savior, have mercy on us and grant us success. Jesus the Savior, have mercy on us and grant us success. O Mary, Mother of Jesus the Savior, Pray for us. Anyone who drinks it, says the Lord, the water I shall give will become in him a spring dwelling up to eternal life. Let us pray. Stand up, everybody.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished with the while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Raise your articles and sacramentals for blessing. O Lord God, listen favorably to our prayers. And with your right hand, bless these sacramentals and souvenirs of the International Sanctuary of Jesus the Savior and Mother Mary LL that your people would like you to bless for them. Send your holy angels so that all who make use of these sacramentals and souvenirs may be delivered and guarded from every danger. And as you granted faith and grace by your deacon Philip, to the man from Ethiopia who was sitting in his chariot and reading the Holy Scripture, show the way of salvation to your servants, so that helped by your grace and always intent on doing good works, we may, after all the trials of our pilgrimage and life on earth, attain everlasting joys in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. I cannot, I cannot do them now. I cannot, I cannot do them now. There are things I used to do. Places I used to go, Jesus is holding me. I cannot, I cannot go. Jesus is holding me. I cannot go. I cannot, I cannot do them now. I cannot, I cannot do them now. There are things I used to do. Places I used to go, Jesus is holding me. I cannot, I cannot go. Jesus is holding me. I cannot go.